we are going to study about finite automata and formal languages. In this video, we are going to study about introduction to the automata theory. Coming to what is automata theory? So, automata theory can be defined as the study of abstract computing devices or machines. It is also defined as an abstract computing device which is an automata. So, a device need not be a physical hardware. It is an abstract. It is not existing. It is just an abstract machine. So, the computer science uh, fundamental question lies is find out what different models of machines can do and cannot do. So, the answer is the study of theory of computation. Let us see some basic terminologies which we will be using in automata theory. So, first one is the alphabet. So, alphabet is a finite non-empty set of symbols. So, here we are going to make use of the symbol sigma to denote an alphabet. Example, binary alphabet is 0 and 1 and all lowercase letters sigma is equal to a, b, c up to z. Alpha numeric, the sigma will be a to z, both capital as well as the small a to z and 0 to 9. So, suppose uh, my uh, alphabet is containing only digits, then sigma will be 0 to 9. Second terminology is a strings. A string or a word is a finite sequence of symbols chosen from sigma and here empty string is represented by the symbol epsilon which means it is a string containing nothing and uh, the length of the string w is denoted by w within two lines it is the equal to the number of characters in the string so suppose my x or w is a string which is given by 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, then this x contains 6 symbols which is written as length of x is equal to 6. And uh, I can assume that this uh, empty string can be present anywhere. So, suppose here for this string, so I can assume that empty string epsilon is uh, present after 0, 1, after 0, after 1, after 0, 0 like this. Even then this length of empty string is 0. So, therefore, the length of this x will remain the same 6. And uh, x and y if suppose uh, are the strings from the same alphabet then x followed by y we call it as a concatenation of two strings x and y. Suppose my x is equal to 0, 1 and y is equal to 1, 0. Then x concatenated by y will be equal to First write the symbols of x which is 0, 1 followed by the symbols of y which is 1, 0. So, this is a string formed by the concatenation of x and y. Next terminology we are going to see is a powers of an alphabet. So, we have uh, seen that Sigma is a symbol used to represent the alphabet. It could be alphabet, uh, could be binary alphabets, digits, alpha, di alpha numeric, only digits, likewise. So, then the representations which are used to, uh, used to specify the powers of an alphabet are sigma to the power of k, which indicates that Sigma to the power of k is the set of all strings of length k and uh, sigma star is a notation used to represent the strings of any length. So, the length of the string could be 0, 1, 2 or anything until any length. So, this is sigma star 
and uh, sigma plus is nothing but all strings of uh, length 1, 2, 3, everything. Suppose my sigma is 1 and 2. Then what is my sigma star? Then sigma star will be all strings of length 0. So it is epsilon. Then all strings of length 1 which is 1 and 2. Then strings of length 2. So it is 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1 and 2, 2. Strings of length 3, you will have 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, like you will have 8 strings of length 3. So, the list goes on. This is your sigma star. Now you coming to your sigma plus. So sigma plus contains all the strings of sigma star excluding the empty string. So your sigma plus can be written as sigma star minus empty string. Next terminology is the languages. So this language is represented by the letter L. So L is said to be a language over the alphabet sigma only if L is a subset of sigma star. So right now we have seen what is sigma star. It is a string of any length from the sigma. And a subset of that sigma will sigma star will form the language. Suppose, for example, let L be the language of all strings consisting of n zeros followed by n ones. So this n could be any value. So the language L contains epsilon. When I put n equals to zero then I will not be getting any zeros or ones. So the language will be epsilon. If I put n equals to 1, then 1 0 followed by 1 1 will form the string 0 1. If I put n equals to 2, then it is 2 zeros followed by 2 ones. If it is uh, n equals to 3, then 3 zeros followed by 3 ones. So this is a subset of sigma star. So this is one language. Similarly, I can define another language like the language L is a set of all strings with equal number of zeros and ones. So this equal number of zeros, it is uh, nothing but I can have zeros and ones in any form, but the number of zeros must be equal to the number of ones. So if the length of the number of uh, zeros is represented by n, then if n is 0, then I will be getting the string epsilon. If n is 1, I can get the number of zeros is uh, 1. So that because the language is equal number of zeros and 1s, I should have 1 followed by it. Or else I can have 1 followed by 0. So if the number of uh, zeros is 2, then I will be having 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. Likewise, it will have equal number of zeros and 1s. And uh, empty language is represented by the symbol phi. And uh, now, if I as ask that if L is equal to uh, epsilon, is L an empty language? So, epsilon is also a string. And this language L contains an empty string. So, it is containing at least one string. So, therefore, L is not an empty language. 
So till now we have seen some of the basic terminologies of the finite automata. Now let us see what are the applications of the finite automata. So the finite automata are used as a software for designing and checking the behavior of digital circuit, whether this digital circuit works as the requirement. The second application is the finite automata are used in lexical analyzer of a compiler design phase. And uh, the third application is the software for scanning large bodies of text for pattern finding. We are going to make use of finite automata. And the next application is uh, it is used as a software for verifying the systems of all types that have a finite number of state. So you should make sure that the system has finite number of states. Then only we can make use of the automata for verifying the systems. Example is your stock, uh, stock market transaction, communication network protocol, all such applications. Let us see one basic uh, application of finite automata. It is used to represent the machine. So like uh, you have a switch at your home. So this switch can be uh, in the state on or off. So these uh, states we can represent by using the symbol uh, labeled circle. And here on and off we call them as the states. And uh, when I push the button off then it changes to on. When I push a button on then it changes back to off. And uh, either on or off will be the one of the state we represent as a start state. Now to see the model to recognize the keyword then so we can write it using this diagram. So this diagram we call it as a state transition diagram. So the start state nothing has been read. So once I read the alphabet T I will go to the state here and this state I am labeled with the alphabet T. And uh, if the next symbol is H then I am going to change the state from T to TH. And uh, the, from the TH state if I receive the input E then I am going to again change the state to THE. And uh, in the state THE if I receive the next symbol as N then I am going to go to the state then. And here you can observe that for the first state I have named with, with the start symbol and the last state here then I am writing with the two circles which indicates it is a final state and all the intermediate states uh, T, TH, THE we call them as the intermediate states and uh, from T after receiving H I am changing the state to TH. So this we call it as a transition function. So a finite automata is a state diagram that comprehensively captures all possible states and transitions that a machine can take while responding to a stream or sequence of input symbols. And this finite automata is a recognizer for regular languages. And uh, these regular languages can be recognized by using either deterministic finite automata or non-deterministic finite automata. So this deterministic finite automata in short is written as DFA and it in this DFA the machine can exist in only one state at any given time. We will see what is this in the later videos. And uh, non-deterministic finite automata in short is written as NFA or NDFA. In NFA, the machine can exist in multiple states at the same time.